Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode 10 of Yona of the Dawn. Anticipation. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh man, we're finally getting to a dragon, I believe. And I believe it's the white dragon. I believe it's the one with the dragon claw. <laughs> the claw. And I'm pretty, pretty excited about this because we've spent nine episodes getting to know Yona and Hawk and seeing all of them, getting to know Yoon, seeing Iksu, seeing what old Suwan's up to. We, we've had these episodes to build up these characters and build up the uh, main story and the lore of the dragons, and now we're finally getting to the dragons. So I'm very excited, and I'm surprised. I shouldn't be surprised it's the white dragon first. I guess if we're going in order, it's gonna go the white dragon and the blue dragon, and then I think the green dragon's last. Maybe it's the yellow and then green. It's either yellow than green or greener than yellow. But in any case, I'm pretty excited because these dragons have been led to be explained to us as humans that were given the blood of these dragon gods and so they're immortal. So they've just been hiding out this whole time since King Kiryu died, just waiting. And now I think that Yona's like the reincarnation of that. And so it's, it's interesting. But yeah, so I'm pretty excited. I am excited to see what all is going to happen in this episode and what we get into. So with that being said, let's not dwell any further. Let's jump right into this, shall we? So we are going to start episode 10 of Yona of the Dawn, and we are going to start that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Oh my gosh, this episode was really good. <laughs> this episode was really good. So, um, Gija, Gija the White Dragon. Oh my gosh. Okay, Gija. All right. I, some of you pointed out that sometimes the subtitles and name spellings are not correct with this series. So I'm sure that you all will comment down below if it's not spelled G-I-J-A, Gija, or if, it, or if that's the actual spelling. But uh, he's great. I have a feeling that all of these dragons are going to have different personalities and be very, very different, but it's all going to be great to add to the crew because Gisha, Gisha's technically the oldest of our four traveling now, but he's definitely not the most mature. Well, here's the funny thing. Yoon is probably one of the most mature ones and he's the youngest because I, I want to say Hawk is the most mature, but Hawk is kind of trolly too and he gets kind of childish sometimes too so none of them are super mature Yoon is really mature when he needs to be but yeah so this this village that's basically they all are descendants of the dragons meaning that this inbred village <laughs> over time no wonder that Gija's like, I don't want to marry any of these people that are my cousins. <laughs> Which, again, we've established that's a historical context. And it makes sense because this village has been hidden up in the mountains protecting the blood of the dragon. Yeah, there, there's going to be a little bit of inbreeding there, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> because maybe they accept a few outsiders if they want to come in and stay and never leave. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing, right? But, okay, establishing that the dragons themselves are not immortal. The power is immortal, but the dragons themselves are not immortal. That's a big thing because I thought going into this episode that the dragon in this village was the original dragon and they just hadn't aged. They just been holed up inside this village and just had taken root here and decided to live out here the rest of their days. It's not the case, not the case at all. The case of it is actually that they are they're they're mortal they're humans and their power is immortal so they pass it on down to the next generation so so that's kind of mm, but here's the thing too he establishes that it doesn't have to be genetic it'll pass on to someone regardless so it doesn't have to be one of his kids that's interesting so it's going to pass down to someone that I guess as long as there is a blood relation to the dragon still alive, the power will pass on. So I guess what Gija was saying was that if he dies in battle, someone born in that village from someone that has the blood will inherit the power. So uh, that that reduces the stakes a little bit on Gija leaving. Because at first when he said he was going, I was like, this village has dedicated itself to protecting the power. Why would they just want him to go? But he establishes there at the end that if he dies... Someone in that village is going to give birth to someone that will have the power. The power will transfer to the next generation somehow, whether it's Gija's child 
or a villager's child in there that has the, as long as the blood of the dragon exists, then we're good. Now the problem is if somebody finds that village and kills all of those people, you know, like the fire tribe or something crazy, if somebody got in there and, and killed someone in the, and killed the village and there were no blood of the white dragon left, then it would be on Giza to have a child that would carry on that power. Okay. And they also established that once the power transfers to the new white dragon, the old white dragon loses that power. Gotcha. So when Giza, when the power transferred to him, his father lost that power. Okay. So that's good to know that these dragons that we're going to meet are not the originals. They just have that power within them and it's just been lying dormant waiting on Yona to come and for them to serve them. We're going to talk about that. That's This is so interesting. I like the lore and the world building we're getting with this. So poor Yoon. Yoon is like, y'all put me in a cage. Why? You'll suffer divine punishment. The dragon decides who will be punished. So the dragon is like the, the clan leader. So like Hawk was the leader of the Thunder tribe. Then uh, Gija was the leader of this tribe. And then he goes along his way and leaves someone else in charge while they're gone. And I like that Yoon's thinking about, I, like, I hope they haven't been captured. And as soon as he thinks that, we cut to the older man. He has a little white dragon flag and he's like leading him on a tour. He's like, to your left, you'll see the white dragon's captive. <laughs> and Yoon's like, are you kidding me? You're taking a casual tour. And I love that they're both like, oh, oh, hey, Yoon, how you doing? <laughs> The humor in this show is wonderful. I love its sense of humor. It's so great. It's on the nose and it's it's just comical. I absolutely love it. And they're like, our guest has red hair, as you can see. And they're like, ha ha. So, man, at first I was like, man, if somebody just shows up with red hair, then we're all, we're all great. But here's the thing. As Yoon says, he's like, what if Yona turns out to not be the descendant or reincarnation of King Kiryu? What's going to happen then? And then the old man was like, hmm. I <laughs> didn't want to say like, well, we'll kill you. <laughs> All of you. If, if that turns out to be the case because you can't leave the village. Or maybe he would say that y'all just can't leave the village. You got to stay here forever. So yeah, basically this entire clan has the power of the white dragon passed down from generation to generation. And I've noticed that none of them have blue eyes. Well, except, well, the granny does. So maybe. Interesting. <laughs> and I like that Hawk is like holding Yona, like keeping her away from all these people fangirling over her. And of course, Hawk's not going to complain about her being carried by him. He's not going to complain about that at all. I also like that Yona, who has hated her red hair this entire time, they're calling it beautiful and she's so like happy about it. And Yuna's is like, do they just worship the red hair here? And it's like, well... No, the red hair evokes special memories within our clan. So here's the thing. This blood of this god passing down through these mortal humans, it evokes memories. It's kind of crazy. Like it'll evoke memories of Kiryu. And we're going to talk about that when the blood activates in Giza. But yeah, the first white dragon served a red-haired master with like the long flowing red hair like a dragon. Mm -hmm. And Yona's like, well, I always hated my hair. But now it's like, He's like, you mustn't say such things. You were sent here by the priest. Yeah. So this, I feel like with each dragon that we meet, we're going to go through the, the run of the mills of like, because this village here is the stereotypical, we've been waiting for the master to come. Like they're the very like religious tribe. They're like super tied in with the priest. I can see why Ixu sent them here first. Because they're like the most stereotypical, we've been waiting on you to come. Like they are the most we are attached to the Kiryu myth and the blood of the dragon. So yeah, we're going to do whatever you want because you're Kiryu's descendant. So, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense why Ixu would send them there first. Because I'm imagining from the looks of the green and yellow hair dragon, they look more like shifty, like they're more like, like they're shiftier or like vagabonds or like a... Um, a thief or something like the yellow one looks like a thief because he has like the bandana and the gold coin stuff. He looks like a thief or a pirate or something. Um, and I feel like they are not tied to like a religious clan or a tribe or like any kind of structure like that. So maybe their powers have just been passed on throughout generations without this protection of the village sort of scenario. So we start out with the most stereotypical case and we're going to move away to more um, outside the box cases of these dragon's blood being passed down through time. Okay. So good. So yeah. And then Hawk and them were like, 
oh, so you think she's the descendant of King Kiryu? And he's like, well, you may also not be. And Yoon's like, so if she isn't, then what are you going to do to us? And it's just like, it's really awkwardly quiet. So, yeah, I, I like the idea that only one villager possesses the power of the white dragon. And that's the claw that gets passed down. That's how they know. And he is born with the dragon inside his right hand. Mm-hmm. For some reason, my right hand has been throbbing this morning. Yeah, because it knows that Yon is close. And so, yeah, then we get the grandmother. The white dragon's injured. <laughs> I like it, yeah. So, so they're establishing, one, that he's 20 and that he should be married by now and have kids to pass on the power. And he's like, oh, God, no, get out of Get me out of here. I don't want to be assigned someone to marry, right? But he's also, I like that Gija is dedicated to his tribe. He's dedicated to protecting them. But he, you could tell he kind of has like a yearning like Yoon. He wants to move out. He wants to go see the world. And when the granny says, you possess the power of the gods. And there's like a throne room there. There's like, like two thrones in the tree, but they're empty. And she's like, you shine brighter than all the white dragons that came before you. And he's like, but I feel impatient. That's what the anticipation is, anticipating yeah, when am I supposed to use this power and for what purpose? So yeah, he spent his whole life in this village waiting to use that power. And they establish that the granny says, well, when the time comes, you'll use it for that person. And if it doesn't happen, then you're going to pass it on to someone else who's going to do the same thing. So it's possible this era doesn't need your power. But it needs to be there the next one after that. So yeah, this power has been passed on from generation to generation. You can see the dragon claw comes up to his elbow. Um, it, she says that if you can't use this power in this generation, then the one who gets it from you in the future will use it to protect their masters where you perhaps could not. So yeah, it's, and you, and you can tell Gisha's like the next white dragon. He's like, uh, and she's like, you only need to stay in this village and not worry about anything. And that's what he's like so frustrated by. He's like, I'm going to stay here my whole life waiting for this one person to come. And if they don't, then I'm just going to pass the power on down to the next person and die. Like, is that living? You know, we have this conversation in other anime. Like, is that, is that living just waiting there for stuff to happen? But he, you can tell he wants to go out and actually do things. And so lucky him, he's the generation. We also get a timeline established that it's been a thousand years. So it's been like generation after generation. And I love that Yona is presented as a red star that he's reaching out to grab. I want to meet the master who needs me soon. And I wonder if that's like the blood in his hand, sensing that she's near, like causing that desire. Interesting. But yeah, I like this idea of this power being passed on. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the, then the granny's like, you should have a wife by now. And he's like, get me out of here. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this at all. Are there no girls in this village that you like? And he's like, please, master, come and save me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, in this, he see he hears the villagers and he gets mad because nobody told him about the outsiders coming. And he thinks that they're a threat. So, he's like, well, we need to get rid of them to protect the village. And she's like, oh, well, there's a cute girl among them and apparently everything's okay. And he's like having none of it. Nobody told him about anything. And so, he changes his clothes. And when he does... We see he has four claw marks on his back, like 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 a like a dragon claw. So I wonder, I wonder if that's how the dad transferred the power to him through the claw mark, or if there's something else that's happened. It looks like a claw mark, like from a beast. So, but he's never left the village, so that's interesting. He's like, we have to be careful of female assassins. I'm like, well, Yona could be dangerous, you know. And then he's like, at least let me use my power to protect this village. Mm, I like it. So yeah, Yoon is impatient. And then Hawk and Yoon are just peacing out. And I don't know why she has her hood up. I guess to make the reveal more dramatic whenever Gija sees her. So yeah, when a child is born with the power of the white dragon, the dragon's blood disappears from the previous one. Yeah, and then there's this long bloodline that has to be maintained until the power is needed. But apparently, according to Gija, if he dies, it's still going to transfer on to someone else. So, hmm. And then, yeah, Yona's saying, she's like, they've spent a thousand years cultivating this power and saving it. And she's like, I'm just going to waltz in and take it. And then Hawk's like, well, should we give up? And she's like, no. <laughs> oh, and I love that sunlight. And I love that she's like, lend me your sword. 
And she has that little blade. So I'm wondering, like, did he get that little blade for her and he's just been holding it on him? Hmm. And she's like, well, if the white dragon won't help us, we'll just have to train more. And you can tell Hawk's like, okay, I, I'm up for more training sessions. Hawk's like, you don't have to tell me twice. And then, yeah, Gisha's all brave and bold because the hood's up and he's going to just throw out these scoundrels. And I like that she uses that word again. And he's like, I'm going to tear you apart with my claws. Ooh. And then when she turns around, the dramatic reveal of the hair. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We did it all for dramatic effect. <laughs> And that's when he sees it. And that's when the dragon claw reacts. The blood reacts. Oh, and it gets bigger. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, and so then this this dragon, you are now our other halves. Ooh. Yeah. You will serve Hiryu as your master, protecting him with your lives. It's the, it's the, the contract that was made with the original ones. You will love him and never betray him. Oh, oh my gosh. And she's like, what? So yeah, so there's an el an element of this. This is the person I've longed for. So there's an element of this that is kind of beyond their control. Like they can't control it. it. The dragon blood inside of them is like, no, you're going to protect her no matter what. And love her and everything. And they can't control it. So, so it's kind of... It's kind of scary because these are mortals, these are humans, but because they have this dragon blood in them, they can't control that they want to be around her. It's kind of outside of their control. So that's interesting. The blood of the white dragon. Yeah. You'll see a dazzling light. And that's when you must depart. Mm-hmm. And I like they used Yoon's uh, bag as a pillow. I like that they used that for him. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, oh, the dragon, like, claw was on fire. That's crazy. Like, the blood, he said the blood was boiling inside of him. That's, uh crazy. Crazy talk. Uh-huh. And then he says that he tells his father that it's time. Yeah, all these generations have protected the blood just for him to be able to use it now. And he's so grateful and happy to see her. It, it's crazy because we don't know how much of this is the dragon inside of them being happy and how much of this is actually them being happy. So that's kind of disturbing in a sense because they don't have a lot of control over themselves <laughs> necessarily. So interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah, and these people are just like basically worshipping her, which is crazy. And Hawk's like, hmm. <laughs> and yeah, Gigi's is just enamored with her because that's, it's like, a beacon, right? She's like a beacon to them. They think you're the king um, because you have red hair. And it's like, well, I'm actually thinking you're the descendant of Kiryu. So there's probably more to that. Mm -hmm. And then they tell him the name, Yona. And the blood inside of me says to protect you. Yeah. So it's like whether Gija wants to do it or not, the blood's going to make him do it. So that's interesting. I'm wondering if there's going to be any of the four. Because Gija like immediately is like, yep, time to go. Ready to get out of this village. Ready to go do the thing. I'll protect you. Let's do it. But I'm wondering if any of these other three dragons are going to try to resist and be like, I don't want to do this. I, I feel like if any of them, it's going to be the green haired dragon that's going to be like, I don't want to go with you, but can't help it. So that's interesting. I, I don't know. In the OP, the blue dragon and the yellow dragon seem tied to Yona just like, just like Gija, but the green dragon kind of hangs back with Hawk. So if anybody's hesitant, I figure it's going to be them. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, uh, Hawk being super excited about all this. I love it that Hawk's really excited. And Yona's like, what's up? And he's like, you picked a fight with a god. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh! and we, we'll get that later. But Hawk is, Ixu's prophecy being right. Yeah, interesting. And so, yeah. Since I was a child, this has been my clan's greatest hope. So yeah, he tries to pay Hawk off. Gisha does. That's interesting. Gisha tries to pay Hawk off. Like, okay, get out of here. And Hawk's like, um, no. <laughs> but still takes the money. Because, I mean, Hawk's smart. Hawk's like, we could use all this gold. We need to take it with us. But also, I'm not leaving Yona. <laughs> and so yeah, I like this dynamic between Gisha and Hawk. That they're both, like, Gisha's like, get out of here, you bystander. And Hawk's like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving. And then, yeah, Yona, Yona saying that I need Hawk's my childhood friend and he's protected me all this way. I need him to stay. 
And, and Hawk's saying, maybe I've gotten fat as he took the money and Yoon's like, you're shameless. Um, but yeah, Hawk, here's the thing. Hawk has trolled Yona so much that she doesn't understand when he's genuinely happy. And he's genuinely happy in this moment that she picked a fight with a dragon god. And he was like, girl, you could tell Hawk. Hawk reminds me of Spike from Cowboy Bebop. There's there's a line from Spike in Cowboy Bebop where he's like, I love a woman that can kick my ass. <laughs> I feel like Hawk is in the same boat as Spike. He's like, I, he likes strong, assertive women. And when Yona gets like that, he's like, mm hmm all about it. So, <laughs> I love it, though. I love that that we established that, that Hawk and Geisha just don't have a good relationship. And he's, like, calling Geisha a snake. I love it. I absolutely love it. And Yoon, Yoon's saying, this is going to be a pain. <laughs> Yoon is like, I'm going to have to babysit all of you, and I'm the youngest one here. <laughs> it's great. So then, of course, we have a feast. We have a cultural feast because it's you have a tribe that are super, like, into special cultural rituals. Why not? Sure thing. They got lots of food here, and Hawk's like, ha. Hawk looks so bored. But then you see, like, them talking and Gisha getting so excited. It's It's great. And then, of course, the granny. Up until now, I've raised four dragons. So she's pretty old. She reminds me of my great-grandmother, which is great. And But she's imagined this day when he would leave. And then she gets all sad, though, at the end. Because he is going. And they're all... You can tell that the village is sad because they've all been preparing for this day. But then once it comes, they're like, uh... And this was so tender, like the little send-off. Where he's like, leaves them in charge to protect the village and keep them safe. And, oh, and then the granny tries to send him off with all the, the blankets and a woman. And he's like, no. <laughs> it's so sweet. And then him hugging the grandmother. That's so cute. Like, I love that moment. I love it. But him, like, her saying that I want you to come back and I'll be the one here greeting you. It's like, uh, it reminds me of, like, Hawk's grandfather saying that he'll be there when he comes back, too. It's like all these people are seeing these characters off and wishing them the best of luck, but then saying that they'll be there when they come back. And it's like, I, I want Geisha to go back and see this granny. I want him to go back and see her. I want her to be there when he comes home. Like I, uh, I know that this extends beyond the anime into the manga and I want to read into the manga, but I want him to see her again. Like that's just, and then like the light shining and he touches her hand with his human hand and hugs her and saying he spent more time with her than his parents. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. The hug reminded me of when Iksu hugged uh, Yoon. It's that same vibe. That same vibe of that hug. It's so sweet and wholesome. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Yeah. And then the granny's like, I've got tons of time left to live. And so, yeah. So when they all took off together, I was like, okay, now what are they going to do now? Because the priest led him to find the first dragon. But that's good. Here's the thing, too. It's smart that Iksu led them to to Gija first because not only has Gija not only is Gija totally on board with leaving with Yona and joining her crew, but also he's been raised and trained over the years knowing what the duties of the white dragon has been. So he's had all this lore passed down since the first white dragon. He knows all the history about the dragons. He knows how it works. So he can give Yona, Hawk, and Yoon that information, but also he knows that his power connects him to the other dragons, which is really important to know, right? So it's good that we've met. It's It was smart of Ixu to lead them to Gija first because he would know all the history of his ancestors. Whereas if they'd met, let's say, the green dragon first, and the green dragon's just, the power's just been passed down willy-nilly from generation to generation, he doesn't know about it, then they'd be in a lot worse of a situation. So Ixu, Ixu using the old brain there, mm-hmm. I can detect those who possess the power of the dragons. Yeah. And we get this chart where it's like their blood connects them all together. And it looks like we see the very, we see the dragons, the first ones all together, like what they look like. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The green one has the same hair bow as the one in the, in the ED. So I wonder if that's something that's passed down from generation to generation with that dragon. I don't know. I like that Yoon got all emotional about leaving because he would, because he had the same you know, farewell with Ixu. So he was crying and Hawk's like, why is your eyes red? It's like, leave him alone, Hawk. He's been crying this whole time. Can't you tell? Oh, I just, I love it. I love it. And then 
Gija saying, I've never met them though, but he has that smile on his face like like there's like a kindred spirit there. And there is. The funny thing is, the thing that's crazy about it is, again, we don't know how much of this is the dragon blood tying them all together and how much of it is them as humans. So that's what's interesting. That's what's interesting. And then, yeah, Yoda, how convenient. And he's like, convenient. And then she's like, this is great. <laughs> you can help us find all the dragons. And then, yeah, by the way, what's your name? And I love this because the whole time he's been raised being called the white dragon by everybody except his parents. And she's the first person who really wants to call him by his given name. And he said, I thought no one would use the name my parents called me ever again. Which is kind of sad because, yeah, it, it's they have this blood of a god inside of them. And so everybody kind of like half worships them. And so he's grown up his whole life thinking that he's not going to be like an individual person. Like nobody cares about the mortal side of him, like the human side of him. They just care about the dragon side. So the fact that Yona, who's tried her best this whole series to connect to everyone on like a much more personal level, the fact that she instantly is like, I want to call you by your given name. It's like, ah, it, she wants to know him as the human Gija, not as the white dragon. I love that. That's such a... That's so telling of Yona's character. And then obviously he's going to respect that even more because she's recognizing him as a human and as a white dragon. Gija. Yeah. Ah, I love it. I love it. She says, that's a nice name. He's like, oh. And so, yeah. Ah, oh, this is great. This is so great. I love it. I love this episode. It's wonderful. So yeah, we've met Gija, the white dragon. He's great. I'm, I'm excited for him and Hawk's banter. I have a feeling that Gija is like gonna, especially after she called him Gija by his name, he is gonna be all about her and like on the Yona train, which is gonna just fluster Hawk to no extreme. So I'm, I'm really excited to see their banter back and forth, to see Yoon have to babysit all of them <laughs> and to see Yona and to meet the other dragons. So yeah, I, I want to see his claw power in action. I want to see that too. But I'm so excited, y'all, because we're finally getting into these characters proper and slowly meeting them and getting more into the lore and the idea of how the dragon blood works and how the mythology goes. It's all it's all exciting. I I am all about it. So that's so great. But yeah. So I'm curious to know your thoughts down below, what you think of Gija, what you thought of this episode. Um, obviously no spoilers, but I, I really liked this episode. This was, this was great. But yeah, so I, I'm excited to see next episode with Gija joining the crew, how he's going to impact the dynamic. I'm really excited to see that, but we shall see, won't we? So in the meantime, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah. I'll be back next week with episode 11 of Yona of the Dawn. Bye.